we're right at that 10 o'clock on the button kind of mark for the day. So if you are feeling ready and brave and good to go, we can get this show on the road. All that I need to do is I'm going to turn on the record button. Oh, maybe it already is. So we're good to go. Okay. Uh, so my name is Lily. And Okay. And for my genius hour, I decided to try and write the piano part to a song. So ever since I started playing piano about a year ago, I loved playing it. But this was very diff it was very difficult to write a song because I've only been playing a year and don't know as much as I would hope to know. And but I did want to challenge myself because that's what genius hour is about and I knew this would be challenging, but I thought it'd be a fun thing to try to accomplish. So in the beginning, my piano teacher had me write part of a song in both A major and C major. Uh, she had me do this so that I'd be able to pick which part I liked best and write the rest of the song off of that part instead of rewriting one part over and over again. My original goal was to have most, if not all, of the song composed by this time. I did change that goal because it seemed a little bit out of my reach, uh, but that was because I'd never tried to write music before and I did not understand how challenging it would be. So starting out was very difficult, but I was able to get past that because my piano teacher just told me to mess around with my right hand and write down whatever what sounded good to me. Uh, it was very hard to do this because it w I didn't like anything I would write down. And it was also hard to figure out stuff for my left hand because I'm not very coordinated with both of my hands. Uh, but the more I would play the parts I didn't like, the more that I liked them. So the pandemic affected my project in both positive and negative ways, but I was able, I was at home all day, so I did have more time to write, but it was, I had a hard time thinking of anything to write down, but, and meeting with my teacher was harder because, especially at the beginning, because we had to try to transition, transition between meeting in person to meeting on Zoom, and she, w I wasn't able to put my camera in a way where she could see me playing piano, so she'd have to go off of hearing what I was playing, which is a very hard thing to do. So this is what I have so far. the A major one that I composed, which was the first one that I wrote. So it was not as smooth as I had hoped it would be because, uh, even because it was the first one that I wrote, but it did sound better than the C major one. It was just uh, not the same thing, kind of repetitive. So I picked that one to play. And I learned that I should have waited a, until I had a bit more experience than I do. And I figured this out because I was very limited to what I could do because when I started this project, I'd only been playing for maybe four months and I did not know what flats were. I only knew about four major keys and I did not know what 16th notes were and did not have much coordination with my right and left hand, which and all of those would have been very helpful to have to be writing a song with. And I would like to continue this project after the end of the year. Uh, because I started it and I don't want to leave it unfinished and also I want to prove to myself that I can do it. So as I continue to play piano, I would like to keep writing this song and fixing some of the beginning parts as well. Thank you. Any questions? Jillian, do you have a question? Yeah, what, do you have a name for the song that you wrote, or is it unnamed? Uh, it's unnamed. I might wait until I finish it to actually come up with a name for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
What was your favorite part about doing this? Um, like, I don't really know. I don't really have a favorite part. It was just kind of a new experience that I really enjoyed just trying to figure it out. So. Emily, do you have a question for Lily? Uh, yeah. What gave you the idea to do songwriting for your Genius Hour project? Um, I'm not really sure. I just kind of came up. I don't really know. It just kind of came to my mind, and then I decided to do it. Um, I just had loved playing piano, so I decided to try and do this. So. Kaylee, do you have a question for Lily? Yeah. What? Uh, other than just the ones that you did during your genius hour, would you do any other ones or not? Um, I would, but I would wait about uh, maybe another year or so. So I had a bit more coordination between my hands and knew what I was doing a bit more. So. Parents and grandparents, does anybody have any questions for Lily? Lily, do you have any regrets or things that you would change knowing now what you know? Um, I think I would have probably spent more time on it because I did not spend nearly as much time as I could. And I probably wouldn't have been so self-critical. I would have just written down everything I thought of. So, I think that's a fair assessment. Good self-reflection. Nice work. Okay. Are there any other questions, comments, things that are for the good of the order. All right, well, let's give um, Lily a an air round of applause. <laughs> nice work. Well, thank you, Lily. Kamaya, you are up next. Can you guys see it? Okay. Right. Yep, we can. My clay animation project has been a long but rewarding process. I started my project off with watching YouTube videos. After a while, I realized I had been procrastinating big time and using the videos as an excuse for not getting anything else done. I knew I had to get started soon. To start off with my first real use of clay and clay animation, I only wanted to start with blue clay because I did not want to mess with the other clays up. My first short video had no sound and was off time. The video was a bit disorganized and I was just playing around with it. The video was all over the place. My second video had sound, and the timing made more sense. Both videos were short and took a long time to make, but I had tons of fun with them. After many videos of experimentation with clay, I decided I was ready to try people. In my first try, the character I made kept falling over, forcing me to have to reshape it over and over again. The clay lost its form and sank to the ground, which was very frustrating. So I scrapped the video halfway through, hence no sound or plot line. In between my first try and my last try, there were several videos of me attempting to make humanish videos. In my last try, I ended up basing my end product on it. This video was the first I had made with a proper storyline. Soon after this, I reached what I call the messy stage. I started on my brainstorming for the final project. 
After the brainstorming, I brought out all the clay and got to work. The problem was, once I got out the clay, it was instantly everywhere. On the floor, the desk, our clothing, and all over. Poor Grandma! My first setup was this. I had to pile books up for it to be the right angle. Yeah, it fell over a lot. The next setup was hard to build and use. I had to go under it and set a timer and move away from it. This was a very long and painful process. The easiest to use and best, my hands. Although my hands were very shaky, it ended up being the easiest to use and the best. This is my end video. No, thank you. Although I had not accomplished as much as I wanted to for my video, I am proud of how it turned out and the work it took to get here. I have loved this experience and I plan on using these skills in the future. Thank you for watching. Any questions? Let's see here. Lily has her hand up. Why did you want to try claymation for this project? I have always loved clay animation and I found it fascinating. It's like magic. And also because I am not very good with patience and I just want to get things done sometimes. So this project really tested my patience and I knew it was going to be hard going in, but I did not realize how hard it was. Noah has a question. It's more a comment, but I really loved your videos, Kamaya. Thank you. Jillian. Um, why did you make your stories kind of like, wait, <laughs> why did you base your stories the way that you did? Well, I was running out of ideas, and the first one that I truly had a storyline behind was the dating app one, and that one I thought was just kind of a funny short one. I didn't really know what I was doing at first when I was doing the, uh, the one that I based it off of until I was done with it, and then I just kind of pieced together after that. But I basically went to the brainstorming board for my final video, and I looked at all the different ones that I had made, and I chose out some of them and I just added them together and the one with the most prominent storyline was the dating app one so I ended up basing it mainly off of that one. If your story were to continue Kamaya what do you think would happen next? Um, I had planned on going through a few more adventures and meeting some more people I did not have the time to do this also, I had planned on making it reunite with the rest of the flowers on the bush. How long did that take you to make if you put it down in 
hours of your life spent? So many hours. I usually spend like two hours a day working on this. Uh, and that would be, oh gosh, I was working on it. I, I honestly don't know, but I just know it was a lot of time. It was amazing. Uh, parents, grandparents, does anybody have any questions or comments? Well, Kamaya, I must say I am very impressed. It looked like a lot of work, but it was a t was time well spent and um, an amazing end product. That was mind-blowingly cool. I'm still baffled with how you were able to have your uh, flower float above your airplane and everything. I can't even fathom. It was cool. Thanks. All right, let's give Kamaya a round of applause. Okay, next up on our agenda is Miss Emily Mullins, who is going to talk to us about the Plan Z uh, basement remodel project. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm Emily. What grade are you in, Miss Emily? Sixth. Perfect. Okay, so my project is called Plan Z. Um, the original plan was to create a calendar of 12 different people I know who have cancer or who went through the cancer treatment plan. I would go, was going to sell my calendar and with the money I made from the calendar, I was going to hopefully sponsor a child going through cancer treatment. Um, plans change and we realized that a calendar would be a lot of work it would cost a lot more money to make and to sell and it was well past january when we realized this and you really want to try to sell your calendars in january and february because that's when people need new ones so we decided to switch to uh, t-shirts and we were going to make t-shirts with different um, cancer coats on the back and then like people's names and a quote of their choice they could be one that they said, or like just a famous cancer quote. And, uh, and we would have a good friend print them because she has a printing business, so it will be cheaper overall. Um, when COVID-19 first started out, we were originally gonna go back to school mid-April. So I figured that I would just have time to help research my project and work on my t-shirts when we were doing the four weeks of online school, then when, when we went back to school, I would be able to continue my project. Um, I was not able to continue my project because we were not going back to school. And because we had to social distance and we weren't allowed to see anybody, I could obviously not go see a sick child who um, is going through chemotherapy or some other kind of cancer treatment. I need a new new project. I thought about photography. Um, I did not want to do that project. I thought about sign language, still no. And I saw, also thought about scrapbooking, uh, what people are doing during their quarantine time and then donating it to St. George's for people to look through. But I also decided not to do that. Oh, uh, we were going to, we are finishing our basement currently and it's a good project for right now. My parents need some help and I kind of, and I love doing interior designing. So I thought I could help my parents finish the basement. Um, not all projects go as planned. So after I finished that project, uh, we had that in the back of our heads while we were trying to find a framer who could start framing. We found one, but they were very busy for about three weeks of us picking them and my dad hiring him. So during those three weeks, I could not get anything started and I had to rely on another person to start my project, which was not the best. So I switched to 
redoing my bathroom. I wanted to paint it a different color and get a new light fixture, so we did that. I also helped my dad rewire some of the lights in our house, so I learned how to do the electrician, which was really helpful. It's a really helpful skill and also help now in the basement with the lighting and stuff. We also, my mom and I went to Home Depot and we priced out materials we needed for the basement and just to get an idea of how expensive it would be. Um, not all projects go as plans. You have to be able to fix, change, and re-sculpt or build your project. My original project is way different than what I'm doing currently, redoing a basement, but I need to, you just need to focus on it and not worry about the project you wanted to do, but what your current project is. I hope you enjoyed Plan Z. Thank you for listening. Nice job. That was great. Jillian, you have a question or a comment? I think that it was kind of cool that you made that like large transition from making a calendar um, to remodeling your basement. Um, I think both of those and all of your projects along the way were really cool ideas. Thank you. So if you have more time and continue on this project, which I'm assuming your family will, yeah. what do you see as your next steps? Uh, well, we need to like put in the sealants stuff like and my dad is currently rewiring and putting in a like the things that you plug a cord into. <laughs> my dad's currently doing that downstairs and then we also need to put sheetrock up and walls and then paint and put in furniture and water and stuff. Cool. Do you get to help with any of the interior design elements as you yeah. get closer to that phase? Yeah. What My sort mom, of things do you anticipate wanting to have? Well, we bought a TV downstairs, like we got a TV and then we had to set that aside because we didn't have room for it while we were framing and then we're gonna get a couch and like a uh, air hockey table and we have a foosball table. So we'll like put those things down there. And my sister's also moving downstairs. So she will get to pick out some stuff for her room. Cool. Jill, do you have another question or comment? How long do you anticipate this taking? Uh, well, definitely through summer it the goal is to be done before summer ends cool good goal good goal is there anything that has come up that um now that you're into this project that you would change or do differently uh no i will yeah i would probably try to get a different well, I would try to get a frame run sooner. So if you were to do the project, uh, it doesn't take so long and you could start on different things. Good ideas. Emily. Oh, nope, that's Erica's. Sorry. Erica, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, Emily, I know that Mr. Kirsch talks a lot about like the bigger lessons learned through this project. What would you say would be your biggest lesson learned? Um, that not all projects go as planned and sometimes you need to just change it and hope for the best. Okay, good job. Good work. Are there any other questions or comments for Miss Emily Mullins? All right, let's give her a round of applause. OK, next up we have Mr. Brody Mitchell, who's going to talk to us about his Westcott project for the, his history class. Um, and he covered the country of Denmark. Very excited. So Brody, take it away.
And don't forget to unmute yourself, Brody. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are? All right, so my name is Brody. I'm in eighth grade and I did my project on Denmark. Now, this isn't actually Genius Hour. It's a uh, world geography project it's called Westcott. Now, what is Westcott? Uh, Westcott was an idea to make essentially a visual representation of a country in a small area. And it was um, it was supposed to be a thing somewhere in some theme park, but, but um, it did not get passed. It was an idea after that. And this project essentially is supposed to make that myself. And it consists of many elements to make it, such as like pavilion, architecture, colors, nature, and even an attraction. Um, basically what they're supposed to do is to make someone feel like they're in another country when they're really in like, you know, New York. Now, Denmark is located in Northern Europe, uh, right there, as you can see in the arrow. Uh, the population is 5.8 million people, and that's about as much as Washington here. And land design. So I came up with a couple ideas for the land design, and I thought um, the one at the top would be best. And um, the most important part of the place is the um, pavilion. The pavilion really lets you uh, express the country through visuals, such as um, trees, restaurants, uh, benches, really anything you can get to, to make it as um, realistic as you can to the country. And the pavilion should match the theme of the land, and it gives the it gives the guests um, basically a feeling of what it would be like to be in that country. So the menu the menu is a really important part of the land because it gives a better understanding of kind of the traditional um, food and traditions of the Denmark people. <coughs> and one thing I noticed with the food is that it's very simple. There's not a lot to it. And there's a lot of protein, I noticed. Um, and for the Westcott, there should be at least two appetizers, appetizers and a dessert. So I put that in there. So the attraction. Uh, the attraction is the part of the land that uh, essentially is like the joy ride, but it also tells a story about the country and kind of a theme. And I thought, what better way to do that than have a toboggan ride? So I kind of built that, which kind of represented a toboggan sled ride down a mountain. So, you know, because that's a thing you can do there. And I thought that would be a pretty fun thing to make. Um, so colors, colors are, to me, the most important part because they really bring out the emotion and the, the story and the theme. As you can see, um, there's lots of different colors you could use here for different settings. And you can see they're mostly kind of uh, very warm or like very just calm colors that don't really stick out. And I really like that about the country because it's um, just very nice. I like it. 
and it controls the people's emotions when you use colors in certain ways and just control the land overall. So music, uh, music and actually just sound design in general uh, gives the feeling of, you know, really being there because you could have, you know, traditional Denmark music, such as like the fiddle and all that being played. And I thought that would be a really cool thing to add. And also sounds like birds singing and just, you know, ambient noises in the backgrounds would also bring out that as well. I was supposed to have a sound cue, but I did not have it. So thank you. That was my Westcott. Um, the thing I took from this really was that working on a project bit by bit is like the best thing you can do in any scenario. And I feel like that was a thing that I really took from that and I'll use on later projects. Thank you. Good work, Brody. Good work. All right, let's see here. We've got a few hands up. Lily, do you have a question or a comment? Uh, my question is, why was Denmark the country that you picked for this project? There was a couple of different reasons. One being uh, someone recommended it to me and I looked into it first before choosing it. And I thought, you know, I really liked it. I haven't looked into the country though. I didn't know a lot about it. So it would also be a learning experience for me to learn about a new country. All right, uh, let's see. Noah, you have a question or a comment for Brody? It's a comment to kind of back up what you were saying at the beginning, Brody. It was the, it's actually was, Westcott was supposed to be where California Adventure currently is. I just looked. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Thank you for the clarification. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Lily, did you have another question or comment? No, I don't. Okay. Do you want to unraise your hand? There you go. Okay. So, Brody, um, yeah. what did you take away from Denmark? Will it be a destination that you choose to visit at some point in your life? I mean, yeah. I'm looking at it and, you know, just all the things I learned about it. It's like, I really want to go there. It's a place that interests me a lot. Are there any one or two places in particular that you'd like to see or experience in Denmark? Uh, yeah, there is this one place I really want to go. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's um, this like, it's this cliff on the ocean. And it's just, you know, it's beautiful out there. The lighthouse. Cool. Okay, other questions, comments? What sort of advice would you give to yourself um, should you have a project of this size in the future? Um, definitely, you know, working on it bit by bit, not all at once. That's like the main thing that got me through this as much as I did. Good deal. Good deal. How about the foods? Are any of the foods that are on your menu worth a snack on later? Uh, probably. They look really good. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, Brody. Let's give him a round of applause or a little golf clap. Nice work. Thank you very much, Brody. All right, next on deck, we have a duo of presenters. We have Jillian Buckman and Lindsay Mullins, who are going to talk to us about helping the homeless population. So let's, Jillian, if you want to share your screen, and ladies, you are up for a presentation. Helping hands help the homeless. By Jill and Lindsay. Inspirations. Our first project made us want to do something more for the homeless in Spokane. Um, it was also heartbreaking to see all of the homeless downtown and the UGM Foundation, which helps with the homeless. 
The homeless populations in parts of the U.S. Uh, so first one is Portland, and the population is 20,000. In Seattle, it's 10,000. Spokane, 10,000. Miami, there's 40,000. In New York City, there's 70,000. In the U.S., there's a total of 3.5 million homeless people. Making a plan. Um, we thought of new ways that we could help the local homeless in Spokane. We went to Blessings Under the Bridge and saw different things that we could do. We had to think about what kids in our club would be interested in doing. How the coronavirus affected our project. The coronavirus affected our project because we were going to start a club on March 19th, which was the which was the week we were sent home, which highly affected our project because it was the base of the project and we were gonna like branch out from that. And another main point that we had to cancel was our meeting with the mayor. Um, what we would do to continue our project. To continue our project, we would hopefully do this project next year so that we could still do this project that we were looking forward to do and also pass out blankets and other things for the homeless. How we were handling our project. We were handling our project by meeting together on teams and sharing each other's screens, also allowing one another to be able to edit our PowerPoint and to work together. Original plans. Our original plans were to make a club and meet with, and meet with the mayor and discuss how kids our age can help with homelessness, which unfortunately didn't get to happen because of COVID-19. Our club. Our club is going to be about how kids are actually help with the homeless by making projects and passing them out of blessings under the bridge, which is an organization downtown. Um, what did we learn? We learned that even through this tough time, we can still contact and work with each other. Also, that the homeless population population is higher than we thought it would be around other parts in the United States. Big learning moments. These are the three biggest learning, moment, learning moment, moments for us. One, scheduling a meeting with the mayor. That was really big because it's the mayor. Two, passing out blankets at Blessings Under the Bridge. And three, meeting Kate Berg. She is on the Spokane Council, City Council. Our accomplishments throughout the journey. Some of our accomplishments are, one, being able to pass out blankets at Blessings Under the Bridge, two, learning to work and compromise with, G with each other, and three, being able to help the homeless. If we could redo our experience, what would we do differently? One, go to Blessings Under the Bridge more often because we were gonna go uh, a few more times this spring, but we, wouldn't, but we didn't get to because of coronavirus. Two, post that we need sponsors earlier for our first project so that we could have made blankets sooner for the homeless and we would have made more. Three, have the club start sooner so that we, we could have gone in at least a few meetings. And four, meet with Kate Burke and the mayor at the same time so we could have met with them together and we would have been able to meet with the mayor. Um, this is a picture of us with Kate Burke at Blessings Under the Bridge. Um, when we were at Blessings Under the Bridge, we got to interview her and she um, she thought that our project was really cool in that um, this was a good age to start um, being aware of um, everyone around us and she was and she um, got to help us pass out blankets. We'd like to give our thanks to One Blessings Under the Bridge for letting us pass out blankets there and being a big part of our project. Mackenzie, our teacher, for um, helping us contact Kate Burke and letting us call the mayor on her phone. Weez for letting us use his room and answering any questions that we need that we needed to be answered. Um, Kate Burke for inspiring us and letting us interview her. And, um, and last but not least, the mayor Woodward for giving us a chance and letting us schedule a meeting with her. Um, one more shout out. We wanted to give a shout out to our parents as well for helping us. And driving us everywhere. <laughs> Any questions? 
Ladies, could you tell us a little bit more about the uh, blanket process? Because I feel like as a parent, <laughs> there was a lot that went into that. Could you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, so our first project, we really wanted to do something to help the homeless, but we weren't sure what. And so we decided to make blankets and we started out by making 20 blankets by just with the two of us by ourselves every day we had for genius hour and Let's that took this. a long time <laughs> and then um we soon realized that if we wanted to make more blankets faster we had to do something with a larger group and so we decided to have a blanket making party um, in the upper school courtyard with different kids from our class and a few kids from fourth grade and some high schoolers. Yeah. And that helped us speed up our process in making the blankets. And so we were able to pass out uh, 30 more blankets. So we were in total about 50 blankets we were able to pass out. Yeah. Any questions or comments for these two ladies? Were you ever able to see your blankets in use? Yeah, uh, kind of. Well, um, we think a blessing so. the bridge and we'd pass them out. They would just, we'd hand them to them and then we'd also give them a bag with it. So kind of some of them would like take them out. Well, because at Blessings of the Bridge, there was multiple stations, like a food station, clothing, a lot of other stuff. And so they kind of, we kind of see it. We didn't, I haven't, I've seen like maybe a few of our blankets downtown. Yeah. Driving by. It's kind of cool to see that. Well, you can kind of recognize the blankets because they're tie blankets and that's not a very common type of blanket. Um, and so they're kind of easier to spot out. Yeah, that was a kind of more vibrant. Yeah. Erica has a question or a comment for you. Hey girls, actually, I just have a comment for you. I just, I know I'm your mom, Lindsay, and Jillian, I was your teacher at one point, but I just wanna say how impressed I was that you guys chose a project that went all year. Um, that's a huge commitment and such a great perseverance for you to pick a project and feel so passionate to have it last the entire school year. And you even said you might want to continue it. So I just want to give a shout out to the two of you because I think that's pretty impressive for two fifth graders to do that. Thank you. Thank You're you. Um, and thank I you have for a... the shout out on your thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, girls, what did you take away from the experience of being down at Blessings Under the Bridge, seeing what homelessness looked like firsthand? How grateful Let's hear from everyone Lindsay was. first. Okay. How grateful everyone was. Uh, like every time that they got something, they were very thankful and grateful that they were blessed with all these things that people want actually wanted to help them. Yeah, cool. and also that um, we were able to help them in such a unique way and how big of a difference it made in their lives. Um, and it's kind of cool to be able to help people that are not quite as fortunate as us. Yeah. Other questions or other comments? Um, I do have one other question. What would you have asked the mayor if you had had the opportunity to meet with her? Um, probably, um, I don't know. Um, probably some of the same questions we asked Kate Burke. Um, Which were what? Um, oh. How the, wait, oh. why some of the homeless, um, got how some of the homeless got homeless and um, how uh, they kind of like got into like being passionate about the homeless. Yeah. That was a big question we asked Kate Berg. And some of the ideas on what homeless need more of so that we could try and do some of those things in our club. Yeah. 
Well, wonderful job, ladies. That was a fun experience. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, go ahead, uh, Brady. Let's have you get your project queued up and ready to go and go ahead and introduce yourself and everything. Brady, don't forget to unmute yourself so we can hear your lovely voice when you're ready. Um, I'm Brady and my Genius Art project was to reduce my social anxiety Social anxiety is a type of anxiety that, anxiety that pretty much makes you unable to be confident or it pretty much makes you very nervous whenever you're talking in front of people. Um, the symptoms that I have for my social anxiety is that I pause, I stutter, I repeat words that I say, and um, it just makes me really nervous to talk. Some of the triggers for my symptoms for my social anxiety would be talking in front of big groups, talking in front of strangers, or sometimes just talking in general. Some of the causes um, of social anxiety um, are psychological or emotional trauma, but it can also be um, genetic. Um, I learned um, about three different treatments for social anxiety. The first one is hypnotherapy, which is a type of alternative medicine that, that uses hypnosis uh, to create a state of focused attention or increased suggestibility, which would help reduce anxiety because you would start to believe that you didn't really have it. The second one was counseling, um, which I had counseling and in the coronavirus, I had online counseling to help with my social problems. Um, and of course, instead of hypnosis to get rid of your problems, um, they talk to you um, about pretty much what stressed you out, um, and it really helped. Um, the third one was um, having a pet to relieve stress. Be and in the beginning of the pandemic, I got a puppy named Faith. Um, and it was good for my anxiety. Um, and research shows that 74% of pet owners would agree with me when I say that pets help reduce stress by petting or playing with the pet. In the pandemic, my social anxiety almost got worse because of social distancing, which made it so I couldn't really have any social situations or learn from, so from being social. I couldn't really be social, so I almost got worse. Um, and I know that Social anxiety will pretty much affect me for 
a lot of my life, and, but I hope that counseling will help me get rid of it quicker. And that was my genius hour presentation. Wonderful job. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, how did you combat social anxiety during the, the quarantine while you were at home? What seemed to work well for you? Well, I guess counseling and I guess talking online with people. Is there any advice that you would give to someone experiencing um, social anxiety to help them um, either reduce their feelings or to give them encouragement? Uh, I guess the more social situations you're in, the better you'll get at them, at being social. What sort of takeaways do you have moving into the fall when hopefully we'll be able to be all together again? Well, I guess my social anxiety was reduced so I can talk better, which will make it easier to get rid of the rest of it because I'll be able to talk more. Awesome. Are there any other questions or comments for Mr. Brady Nossbaum? Yes, Erica. Hi, Brady. I just wanted to um, commend you for being willing to share something um, so personal in a social setting. I think it's really brave and I think there's a lot of adults who would not be as vulnerable as you were today. So nice job. And you did it in a format that is unusual and stressful to begin with. <laughs> we're all on screens, we're all on computers and you shared something so real. So nice job. Yes, I concur with what Erica said for sure. Jillian, do you have a question or a comment? Yeah, I think it was really cool how um, like your slides were so much different from everyone else's, how um, we were more focused on you than your slides, which I think was really unique and very good. Nice work. All right, any other questions or comments? Lily, do you want to go give him a high five in your house? You want to go on a race really quick to give it, to see if you can shake him, tackle him, something all on while we watch? No, I'm not going to do that to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We'll let you continue to be lovely siblings to one another from across the room. <laughs> all right, so um, we... Thank you very much, Brady. Let's give Brady a lovely golf clap. Nice work. Very proud of everybody so far. So we have Noah Buckman, who is putting in his uh, computer charger right now. So give him just a moment. And then we'll have Kaylee Clark to finish us off for today. Um, I must give you all wonderful compliments. I am impressed with all of the things that you guys have been willing to do. I think that this is a kind of project that not many people would tackle at any age. And the fact that you guys are um, elementary and middle school students is pretty amazing with what you've been able to be willing to do. So congratulations to that. Okay, Noah is back on his screen. Noah, are you getting yourself charged? Yeah. Okay, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yes. So I'm Noah Buckman. Um, I'm, an, I'm in eighth grade. And for my Genius Hour project, I was announcing SGS JV basketball games. So I have a few things I wanted to show you guys about what I learned. So I wanted to 
talk to you guys about why I wanted to do this, what I did, what I learned, and what I plan to do from now on. So what was the reason behind my project? Well, if this has been my dream to all, this has always been my dream to be a sports broadcaster. I've had this dream since I was one year old when I went to my first Mariners game. And I always want to, and I also want to go to Washington State University to become a sports broadcaster. And I can continue my family's Cougar legacy if, if I get in. So what you're about to see here is a video of one of the most famous baseball announcers of all time, Dave Niehaus and his Grand Slam call. Um, it's only it's supposed to be a minute 45 seconds. I only did the first half minute because that's when the call comes. And the guy who hits the Grand Slam is the newly inducted into the Mariners Hall of Fame, Mr. Edgar Martinez. Oh, come on, you. Really? Blech. Oh, good lord. Noah, if you stop sharing your screen and then reshare it, you can um, click on your video and make sure you share the audio. Okay. I will do that. Do you see the little button to click? It's right above screen one on the top left of your share screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then you'll need to go into presentation mode, I believe. Okay. Here we go. We are not able to hear your audio. Interesting. That's okay. So could you tell us um, what we should have heard? What you should have heard was his famous Grand Slam call, which was get out the rye bread and the mustard this time grandma it's a grand salami that was okay. his most famous call okay go ahead and share your screen again and yeah. put up the rest of your presentation please Okay, so my second learning target was what I actually did for this year. Um, so I found out about my Genius Hour at the beginning of the school year by Bob Tillia, our current voice of the Dragons. And he was talking to Ryan Peplinski, the athletic director, about having me announce JV basketball games. And when I was asked about it, I immediately agreed to do it. Um, and it, it was funny, my first game, I was actually anticipating on continuing my project from last year, which was broadcasting, um, not announcing, but when I found out about this, I immediately changed my plan. So my first game actually came way sooner than I thought. Um, it was the Varsity Boys opening day soccer game against Lake City. Um, Bob was out of town with the cross country team that day and I was actually on my way to get soccer balls for soccer practice and I ran into Pep and he told me about it and I ended up doing it. Uh, Kaylee would know, but her the boys team had over half of their team end up with cramps in their legs and um, they ended up losing the game to nothing. So, so the game number two, um, this was planned. Bob actually intended on having me announce this one. It was the girls' soccer game against Kettle Falls. Um, all of the eighth grade girls scored. Um, 
and this was really fun for me because I had always I had wanted that entire year to announce a girls soccer game so I could announce my friends. Um, it was only it was only an hour an hour long because Kettle Falls had a limited number of players. Um, and but then came basketball, which which proved to be very fun. Um, I did lots of talking. Um, because it was so fast paced and um, a lot of action and moving around and stuff. Um, it was very cool and something most schools don't expect. They actually weren't anticipating when I came over to ask them who their starters were every time. However, our coaches knew because I'd done it the entire season. Um, my favorite part of doing this was not only connecting with the athletes and coaches, but I was told by Bob that if you work at the announcer's table, you get free snacks from the concession stands, which I thought was very interesting and cool. So my third target was what I actually learned from Genius Hour this year. So I learned a lot from Genius Hour this year. I learned how to make rosters that work for basketball um, and it, how to keep it and it proved to be very useful because I could use it and it would help make this go a lot faster and keep the game flowing. I also learned how to find ways to connect with the players and coaches, which was interesting because most of the kids knew me after pretty much after the Holy Grail because a lot of the school was there, which was fun. Um, my last target was what I what do I actually want to do after this year. Um, so possible projects for me are broadcasting using this Pixelot camera right here. It's a really expensive camera, but it tracks the game for you. You don't need like a video a video camera that you have to move around with the game. It just tracks it. And a lot of people have one, but or a lot of schools have one, but they need a broadcaster to do it if they want to make or if they want to get a really popular with this. My, another idea I had was making an American Ninja Warrior course. Um, I've been fascinated with that show since I was pretty young and I would talk to Jamie Tender about possibly putting it on campus and using and having the PE classes use it, um, especially for the eighth grade adventure race. So Coach R and Mr. Tuck don't have to make, make an obstacle course every time they can just use this and then becoming a baseball umpire. Um, this guy you see here, this guy actually went to school at the same school that my mom and dad both attended. His name is Mike Molinsky. Um, and also, um, I really appreciate the middle school with the fact that, some, that they came out to watch JV basketball because the numbers are typically very low for JV basketball, and I really appreciated the support that we got, especially at the Holy Grail. Thank you. Any questions? Brady has a question or a comment. Um, why did you choose to change from broadcasting to announcing? Um, just because I've always enjoyed sitting at the announcer's table with Bob and I also enjoy um, I also enjoy kind of listening and I thought this would be kind of fun to kind of learn how he is one of the best announcers in our state for high school athletics. Lily has her hand up. Why did you want to continue your project from last year to this year? Um, just because I wanted to continue working on my dream. And um, I actually did not know this at the beginning of the year, but Bob told me that he had started announcing when he was around our age. And he um, and I found it quite interesting. And he said that if that most schools um, are actually requiring sports broadcasters for schools. So I thought if I could get a good jump on it now, maybe I can get into a good, really good college in the future. 
do you see yourself wanting to learn and figure out that Pixelot camera program, Noah? Yes. 100% yes. I don't want what it to go to waste. What is the benefit to having that um, at this <laughs> school? What does it allow? It allows for a live stream so you can go online, but you have to have a, an account, but you can go online and you can and you can watch the games even if you're not in the gym you can watch the games over the internet cool are there any other questions or comments for mr noah buckman all right um we should give you i don't know like the wave or something noah so we'll give you the hands up instead of a clap <laughs> Nice job. All right, Kaylee Clark is on deck for our last presentation of the day, and she's going to talk to us about the Humane Society. And Kaylee's uh, camera doesn't allow us to see her. The rear facing camera doesn't work, so we're going to listen to her magical voice and see her PowerPoint presentation um, more than anything else. And her cute dog. Okay, so hi, I'm Kaylee Clark, and for my genius hour, I helped out the Spokane Humane Society. So imagine being stuck in a cage, and there's nowhere for you to go. At the Spokane Humane Society, adoption happens all of the time. Around 2,500 to 3,500 new dogs and cats come in annually. Anything will make their day better, and the Spokane Humane Society's motto is adopted is our favorite breed. So for donations, over 70% of the funding comes from us community donors and there's no government funding. You can choose to sponsor an animal if you don't want to adopt an animal, but you want to help them out. You can choose a dog or cat and send money and gifts to them. So I've been to Spokane Humane Society five times. Uh, my mom and I go and we walk the dogs, spend time with them, give them treats. There are three play yards which are just little gated areas that you can take a dog into and you can work on basic commands and you have to be 16 to be able to walk the dog outside of the play yard so i can walk the dog as long as i'm in the play yard and you can play with them also while you're volunteering you can wash their things like their toys in their bowls and you can also give the dogs a bath this is a dog that was running in the play yard So, there are two volunteer options at the Spokane Humane Society. There's canine crew and feline friends. With canine crew, you help dogs by taking them on walks, spending time with them, playing in the play yard, cleaning their items, and there are three stages of volunteering. When you become a volunteer for the canine crew, you are called a wolf walker. That means that you can walk only dogs that are classified as wolf walker dogs which these dogs don't tend to pull on the leashes as much they're they're really easy to walk and easy to take care of and stuff and then once you have 20 hours of being a wolf walker you can then become a dog deputy so these dogs tend to pull on the leash a little bit more and they're not as gentle as the wolf walker so once you have 40 hours in total, then you can become what they classify as a canine coach dogs. So you can walk them. And these, they tend to pull on a leash a lot. Not as easy to walk. And so at the Spoken Humane Society, you can also do the feline friends. So this is helping cats by spending time with them, checking their cages, making sure that the litter box is clean, that there's no spilled water or food. You can pass out toys. And there's two levels of volunteering. For the feline friends there's cuddle crew level one and two there's four rooms that you can go into for cats there's one room which are which is called cat Lannis, that these cats you can trust <laughs> to 
um, be around other cats and just walk around the room. They don't have to be in cages. Then the big cat room is where there's friendly cats that some of them don't get along with each other, so they're in cages, but, but occasionally they get let out. And then that is for Cuddle Crew Level 1. When you're in Level 2, you can go to all four rooms. There's Purrus, and that room is cats that are either more shy or tend to like to keep them themselves. And then there's cat isolation also. So I was going to do a pet supply drive. This was going to be in May, and I was going to put flyers around the school, and it was going to be for two weeks. I already talked to all the teachers with, about this, and then I was going to talk to Melanie about doing a, this drive on March 16th, which was the day that the school closed. So some possible things were pet food, dawn dish soap, laundry detergent, trash bags, cat litter, and paper towels. And so then the school closed, so I couldn't do the drive. So I decided that I was going to do online donations instead. But I felt a little less motivated and I struggled more figuring out what to do. And then I fell skateboarding and I broke both of my wrists. So I was in cast for over three weeks. So there was no pet supply drive in the end. So I didn't meet my end goal. And so some things that I learned were that I learned about the Spoken Humane Society and what they do, and now I'm more knowledgeable about adoption and the Spoken Humane Society. The things that I would do differently were out of my control, like COVID-19 and my skateboarding accident. And because of this project, I think more of those animals so that maybe in the future I could help those animals more. And knowing about these animals and them wanting and needing homes makes me want to continue this project. It was really fun and I enjoyed it so I would continue if I could. And so if you liked my project and you felt like you wanted to help these animals, you could go to their website and the link is right in orange and you could donate and this could help and it's especially because I could not do my pet supply drive. And thank you for listening. Any questions? Jillian has her hand up. Um, why did you choose to do the Humane so Society and not a different place? Well, the Spoken Humane Society, I chose this place because, mostly because it was the closest one to my house. And so it was either the Spoken Humane Society or Scraps, but I chose the Spoken Humane Society. And I'm glad that I did. Awesome. Okay, Lily has her hand up for you. Um, how much time do you think you spent at the Spokane Humane Society overall? Oh, I forgot to say this in my presentation, but I was going to say we have about 13 hours of walking dogs and spending time with them. And so we only need seven more to become the next level of walking dogs. Um, but I've spent a lot of time because every time I go, I always, my mom and I always go to the dogs first, walk the dogs, and before we're about to go, we spend about 30 minutes with the cats. So, we've spent a lot of time there. About how many pets were there on average when you visited each time? Well, there is a lot of them, but I'm not able to go to every room. But in the first kennel, um, where there's like, there's probably about 20 or 15, 20 dogs in that first area. Uh, but you can go behind, you can go into another room that has another section, which is only for the people who are classified as canine coach walkers. You can go back there. Um, so I'm not really sure how many. There's usually, with Purrus, there's usually only a couple cats in Purrus, like two or three. And in, in um, Catlanders, there's usually about four or five. And there's a lot of varying numbers in the big cat room. But all there's a lot of cats and dogs in that place, but adoption happens all the time. So there are many times that we walked a dog and the next time we went back 
two weeks later, it wouldn't be there. So. There's some good, interesting facts for us. Thank you very much. Um, other questions or comments for Ms. Kaylee? Well, unrelated to your project, are you healing up okay? Yes, I'm actually doing really good. Well, that's good. Are you still going to ride your skateboard this summer? Um, I may wear wrist guards if I do. That might be a wise choice. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for sharing that, Kaylee. That was very interesting. And thank you to everyone for attending today and listening to these amazing students and their amazing presentations. Um, any questions or comments or concerns for the good of the order uh, about this process from parents especially or students? Any feedback or advice you'd give to others moving forward? <laughs> All right. Oh, Erica. Cassie, thank yes. you for hosting. You did You're a welcome. great job. I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, <laughs> I am Cassie Buckman. Let me just finish out the meeting with, uh, hi, my name is Cassie. I am an eighth grade and upper school language teacher. And uh, this was awesome. I was super excited to be able to virtually host this meeting, but I had to come to school so that my Wi-Fi wouldn't cut out in the middle of it for everybody. <laughs> so thank okay. you, Erica. You did great. So shout out golf, golf clap for Cassie. Oh, round we forgot to clap for, for Cassie. Cassie. I forgot. We, we better give her a round of applause and a whoop whoop that she has two working wrists now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, thank you very much everybody for attending and there will be a link to this that we'll share out um, should you want to share this with family or friends or anything else to show them um, what has been going on in the life of these children. Um, or if you want to give a little shout out to St. George's as a whole, this is a project that not many other schools take on for themselves because it does require so much time and energy from families and students alike. So thank you very much for your time and energy and congratulations everybody for jobs well done. Yay! And four days till summer break. Let's celebrate that. Yay! <laughs> All right. Well, I am proud of you all and thank you very much family members for attending and supporting these awesome kids. And I wish you all the best of summer breaks and things and I look forward to seeing where your projects lead you next year. Those that are not in the upper school. So thank you very much for attending and have a super day and everybody smile for Erica. John <laughs> Carter loves pictures. He sure does. <laughs> There's only nine of you, though, because it's teens. <laughs> That's okay. It might be a little less intimidating. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great day, and I will sign us out of this fabulous meeting. So have a great day. Great job, thank everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.